explain to you our dichotomous keys. We're getting a lot of questions about what is a dichotomous key. It's just a fancy way of saying a flowchart. And you're going to have to know how to set up your own dichotomous key. Why is this? Well, number one, in lab, you're going to have to write your own dichotomous key to help you identify your unknown bacteria at the end of the semester. So you're going to have to do it as part of an assignment. From an application standpoint, in real life, why do you have to know this? It helps you to identify in microbiology what organism are you working with. And yes, I do have a cat. <coughs> so, sorry about the background noise. Starting off first on how to do a dichotomous key, I just kind of wanted to make something fun that you can look at to try to get the idea of what we're going to do. We're going to ask yes or no questions. This is kind of like a game oftentimes you played as a kid. Guessing game, you got 20 questions, and it has to be yes or no. It's kind of that idea. So this example here, Actually, I'll tell you my daughter made it because my kids really like superheroes. So they just put together a fun one. And what she did is you have these four possibilities over here. How are you going to decide which one of those am I thinking of type deal? You can only ask yes or no questions. The idea is to separate these individually out into separate groups. So the first question, and there's not a right or a wrong way of doing this. This was set up this way just as an example. You might come up with a different set of questions. So the first question is, is it a female? If the answer is no, you go over here and it's going to be possibilities of Captain America or Iron Man. If the answer to yes, it is a female, then your choices are Black Widow and Wonder Woman. So if we go over here and we say, okay, the question was, is the female the response? Yes, okay, it's Black Widow or Wonder Woman. How are you going to decide which one of these two then is the, the one that you're, say, thinking of? Well, your next question might be, is the individual a spy? If the response is yes, then it's Black Widow. If the response is no, they're not a spy, then it's Wonder Woman. Over on this side, you have the two males, uh, Captain America and Iron Man. Is the individual a soldier? Then yes. The answer is yes to that question. It would be Captain America. If the answer is no, they're not a soldier, then it's Iron Man. So it's just giving you a, an example of simply going through these series of questions to separate out what you have. Now another example of doing this and I'm not going to write the questions up, but just to show you there's different ways of doing it. I have a plate here with four different pieces of fruit. There is a red apple, a cherry, a slice of mango, and a kiwi. Now, if I were to say, tell you to uh, close your eyes, I'm going to grab a piece of fruit. Which one did I grab? And you cannot look back at the plate. So you're going to want to come up with some questions. Well, one question you might ask, and once again, there's different ways you could do this. You might ask the question, is the fruit red? If the answer is yes, it could be either the apple or the cherry. If the answer is no, well, first off here, if, it's, if you say yes, it's red, it's the apple or the cherry. So you now split from two things or four things to two over here. The answer over here, no, it's not red, it's the kiwi and the mangrove. So you went from four to two, but now you still have to separate out these two different groups of two each. So over here with the apple and the cherry, now you might ask the question, does it have a pit on the inside? And if the answer is yes, that's the cherry. If the answer is no, because this just has seeds, not a pit. Now you've separated those two out. How would you separate out the kiwi and the uh, mango? Well, if you want to, you could say, is it yellow? If the answer is yes, it's the mango. If the answer is no, it's the kiwi. Now, another way that you might have tried to separate these out, because like I said, there's not necessarily just one sole correct way. 
you could say, start off by saying, does it have a pit? The mango and the cherry have a pit in the middle of it. So if the answer to that was yes, you separate here, no over here. Now, for the kiwi and the apple, you could say, uh, is it red? And you could separate the apple and the kiwi. And then over here, you could also say, uh, is it yellow? Yes, mango. And then you're left with the check. So the idea is you have to come up with a set of questions, yes or no, to try to separate out. So at the beginning, like I said, the whole purpose of doing this is you have an assignment coming up where you have to write your own dichotomous key. And if you look, I have supplied you on Blackboard with this list of biochemical test results for the various bacteria. Uh, if you're face-to-face, -face, these would be the bacteria you would have been working with all semester in the lab. Uh, and even if you're taking online class, it will be one of these bacteria that you will be given for both your group unknown and your individual unknown. So how are you going to figure out what your unknown is? I'm going to give you different test results. Number one, they're going to be pictures of the test, various biochemical tests. So you have to know how to interpret the test. How do you figure out what a positive or a negative is? And then you're like, great. So how am I supposed to figure out what genus and species? What bacteria do I have down to genus and species? And then you're going to use this table that I have provided to you and look up the various biochemical tests. Now, before you do that, that's why I have the assignment for you to do a dichotomous key because that's going to make it so much easier for you to determine your unknown. Now, in microbiology, when dealing with bacteria, you know the biggest classification scheme is is it gram positive or gram negative. On this list of possibilities, some are gram positive and some are gram negative. So what I would recommend you do, <coughs> you were given an unknown. Your first thing is going to be ask, is it gram positive? If the answer is yes over here, you're going to have the possibility of Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidermidis, Bacillus subtilis, and Bacillus megatarian. And I'm going to give you a list of what the possible organisms are, so don't be trying to find it later. I'll try to understand my writing here. If you say, is it gram positive? And the answer is no. Then over here, your choices would be things like E. coli. We have an Enterobacter erogenes. Serratia marcescens. Proteus vulgaris. Pseudomonas originosa, so that's just an example of what we have. So when you set up your dichotomous key, some people will start this way, it's a grab positive. If you wish to have two separate keys, that's fine, where you have a grab positive here and a grab negative here. Now you're going to go, <coughs> if we look at the grab positives here. An example now, how am I going to separate these four out? So let me back up a second. You get your set of re the biochemical results, and in there, there's also going to be staining. So you're going to look at the picture of the gram stain, and let's say you look at it and you go, oh, okay, this is purple. Purple means it's gram positive. So that means I'm going to come down here and go this way on the flow chart. Ignore the gram negatives. They're out the door. They're, don't even think about those. They're not any of the possibilities now. Stick with the gram positives because that's what your initial test results showed. It was gram positive. Well, now you're going to look here and you could do a couple of different things. Does it have spores? 
If the answer is yes, it would be either Bacillus subtilis or Bacillus megatarian. If the answer is no, then it's Staph aureus or Staph epidemides. I'm just going to abbreviate it. So, okay, you start it. Now, you're going to actually start with, I believe, 10 or 11 possible choices. And let's say it's grab positive. You've narrowed it down now to, to four possible ones. Now you've got down, okay, it's one of two. How am I going to separate this out? Um, the staph epidermidis, this one, you can grow it on a mannitol salts auger. Both of them will grow. However, you're going to look at the coloration of it. If it's yellow, it's going to be staph aureus. If it remains beige or not yellow, this staph epidermidis. The media itself will be pink with the growth of the colony. It will not turn it yellow if it's this one. Staph aureus is the only one that turns it yellow. Now over here for Bacillus subtilis and Bacillus megatarian, that's where you're going to have to, to set your Dichotomous Kia, you're going to have to look at these charts because what you would be doing, and when you set it up, say to distinguish between these two, on this chart, these two columns right here are the two bacillus species. Find a test where they have a different result. And there's a couple of them to choose from. Uh, look at the sucrose. Can it ferment sucrose? So sucrose fermentation, no, it's Bacillus megatarium. If it's yes, it's Bacillus subtilis. So you notice that by down here, you have these separated out. And that's what you want to do. For setting up your dichotomous key, you need to use these tables. All of these organisms that are on here, you need to include all of them. How would you separate them out? Like I said, I would first separate out your gram positives from your gram negatives. At the end, I need to see that you would be able to determine, how can you determine E. coli from Pseudomonas aeruginosa? So you've got to be able to do your flow chart. That's the dichotomous key to separate each individual of these uh, bacteria out.